As soon as the United States of America entered World War II in December 1941, the government knew it would need a lot of manpower and machinery. Around this time, the M4 Sherman was about to be finished and planned to replace an unsatisfactory M3 Lee. Because of this, new engine supplies were required due to the part shortage of the radial aircraft unit used here. The US government reached out to various manufacturers, one of which was Chrysler. Let's just say their thinking was quite a bit outside the box, creating a 30-cylinder multibank workhorse in a 9-month time. This is a story of the ridiculous but amazing Chrysler A57 multibank, which was one of the four engines designed for the M4 Sherman medium tank. The multibank was a 30-cylinder of a weird radial shape using automotive straight sixes. It was a bit tricky to work on and with 425 horsepower, it certainly wasn't the most powerful either, but surprisingly became the most reliable Sherman engine. Some say it was a very durable, reliable and efficient power plant. First of all, let's take a look at where it even comes from. Chrysler had a flathead engine series in stock which came from 1924. Being an inline six-cylinder that lived long up until 1950s, it was a major engine for Mopar used by various brands within the corporation. Not only was it an automobile engine, but at the same time it was used as a truck and industrial workhorse with parts incredibly easy to get hands on. In the early 1940s, the company introduced a revision of the six-cylinder. There was a 23-inch short block and then a longer 25-inch engine block with wide bore spacing. One of the largest displacements of the 25-inch was a 251 cubic inches. The 4.1 liter made about 114 to 120 horsepower and the 251 in particular was the one used for the multibank project. The 251 was essentially a stroke version of a 242 using hardened valve seats, insert bearings, four-ring pistons and full water jackets. As a flathead, it was running a fairly low compression ratio, although pretty high for the time at 7 to 1. This was enough to produce 116 horsepower at 3600 rpm and solid 208 pound-feet of torque at just 1600 rpm, basically just about idle. Its torque and dependability were its strong features and it should be no wonder why Chrysler decided to give it a shot at developing their multibank. The Sherman tank itself was designed for simple servicing and the multibank engine had to cope with that. There was a central casting which held each of the five engines together and housed drive shaft drives for power delivery and oil pumps. The two lower engines were at 7.5 degrees, the upper laying engines were angled at 27 degrees about horizontal and the middle one stood upright. Regarding firing, each engine basically fired as a normal 6 cylinder wood and they had to be timed adequately between each other. A proper offset was set for a power impulse to occur evenly every 24 degrees of a revolution. A large center gear wheel took care of the engine timing as a whole. In the beginning, each of the units basically ran individually with its own carburetor, exhaust manifold, water pump and so on. The design was later changed to run a single large water pump. The five carburetor setup remained, but they were all placed high above the engine with metal vanes to equal out air fuel delivery and also to simplify maintenance. Exhaust temperatures of every engine were monitored individually to spot a failing engine bank. If one did fail, parts were easy to come by as engine blocks, heads, crankshafts, pistons and conrods were all the same whether it was the tank or automobile variant of the flathead. When damaged, the engine was robust enough to move around with just 18 cylinders running. A question could occur whether it faced any oiling or fueling issues. 
but all the pumps were placed as low as possible to take advantage of gravity. Despite all the weird angles of each engine, there was sufficient oil flow and pressure at all times with two oil pumps, a pressure and scavenging one. The engine was made as one piece of a package with the radiator, thus engine removal had always been a short and easy job without a need to drain the coolant. However, the weight of the package was hefty and the total number including the radiator, clutch and cooling fan was 5,244 pounds. After all, there was cast iron everywhere. If you recall correctly, such a 251 was able to provide about 116 horsepower to the flywheel. The multibank used in the M4A4 version of the Sherman tank had a combined output of 425 horsepower, meaning about 85 horsepower per bank. The real output using net rating was about 370 horsepower at 2400 rpm using 80 octane fuel. The M4A4 could reach speeds of about 20 miles per hour, peaking at 25 miles per hour for brief moments. Interestingly, it is said that the only time these engines produced the same output was at an idle. However, the multibank excelled in reliability and required only 45 hours per tank for servicing compared to 3 digit hour time with other engines during reliability tests. Out of 49,000 Shermans, 7,499 M4A4s were built and used mostly by the Allied forces as part of land lease programs. In addition, about a hundred of them were placed into M3A4 lead tanks before the M4A4 production was launched. Together, 9,965 multibank engines were made and the rest of them had been used as spare units. Let me know in the comment section what's your opinion about this particular power plant. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers!